show unequaled in its spectacular proportions. Rich and magnificent in its color, and ringing with Irving Berlin's greatest songs. So a girl that I marry will have to be as soft in his pink as a nurse. of a bear my defenses are down she's got me where she wants me and i can't escape no how i could speak to my heart when it weakened but my heart won't listen now got no diamond got no pearl still i think i'm a lucky girl i got the sun in the morning and the moon at night gonna be a pleasure to give you a lesson in marksmanship. Why, you couldn't give me a lesson in long-distance spitting. Anything you can wear, I can wear better. And what you wear, I'd look better than you. In my coat? In your vest. In my shoes. In your hat. No, you can't. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Business like show business, like no business I know. second attempt on the musical box that Emery bought at the auction sale, and this time it was successful. But that box is only worth two pounds. It was worth a man's life, Watson. Numbering the keys. The 19th key of the keyboard is the 19th letter of the alphabet. S. Here. I'll sit down I give it to you, fellow, will you? I knew you'd be unable to resist the bait of my cigarette, having read with great interest your monograph on the ashes of 140 different varieties of tobacco. I should advise you not to move, Mr. Holmes. Alistair. We'll soon have him in jail before he can murder anyone else. Aye. You'll find him all right, like the others. A corpse. Something funny there. Look out, Watson! You're in love with cruelty for its own sake. 
and the world will be much better off without you. And so it will give me the greatest pleasure to... Clean I used to be afraid of that look. The withering glance of the goddess. I didn't think that alcohol would do... Oh, shut up. Dinah, stay here. Oh, please, Mother. Maybe you're going to stalk her again. It's what everybody feels about you. It's what I first worshipped you for from afar. George, listen. First, now, and always. Only from a little nearer now. Hey, darling? I don't want to be worshipped, I... I want to be loved. Someday over the rainbow, way up high. What is this, oh, Connor? Oh, easy, easy, old man. She's not hurt? No, no. Not wounded, sir, but dead. Seems the minute she hit the wall, the wine hit her. Now, look here, Connor. A likely story, Connor. Hello, Dexter. Hello, George. Hello, Mike. Oh. You have a good mind, a pretty face, a disciplined body that does what you tell it. You have everything that it takes to make a lovely woman except the one essential, an understanding heart. And without that, you might just as well be made of bronze. And the night that you got drunk on champagne and climbed out on the roof and stood there naked with your arms out to the moon, wailing like a banshee. I told you I never had the slightest recollection of doing any such thing. What in the name of all that's holy am I to do? Tracy. Yes, Mike. Oh, Parson, Parson, he's never seen Kidridge before, has he? Now, look, I got you into this thing, and I'll get you out of it. Will you marry me, Tracy? dawn's early light, the United States submarine Copperfin slips from its secret Pacific coast base and sets its course toward the rising sun. Her mission, the boldest in all naval history. Gentlemen, our destination is Tokyo. Destination Tokyo. 8,000 miles of historic adventure over and under the sea. The now it can be told story of 60 gallant Americans and the sub they sailed to glory. Fighting men taking that one chance in a million to carry the fight right into Tokyo Bay. We're approaching their submarine net, Mr. Raymond. 
Anything I can do, sir? You can join us in holding our breath. It's Cary Grant as the skipper, John Garfield as Wolf, Alan Hale, John Ridgely, Dane Clark. Tokyo Bay, perfect. I always did want to see one of those geisha gals up close. I bet we sing 70,000 tons. 70,000 tons? You're nuts. Where I go, there's going to be dead Japs. How's your wife feel about you shutting off on these patrols? The way the wives of the men in all the services feel, I guess. I watch you under fire. You don't scare easy. I'm going to ask you to do something. Well, just give me the orders, Captain. This isn't an order. If you go, you go voluntarily. You might not come back. Uh, I'll go, Captain. Wow! We've picked up a Lulu. I hear Japs are happy to die for their emperor. A lot of them are going to be made very happy. I can't, I won't. I can't go through with it. I won't marry you, and that's that. Look, don't you see, dear? Marriage, it's a, it's a, it's a superstition. It's old-fashioned. It's, it's, I, I, oh. Now, Mr. Brewster! <laughs> now, look, don't you? Come on, dear. in the window seat. Yes, dear. We know. Something to me that 
women first and speak to them afterwards? If possible. Merry Christmas, Cole Porter. You write beautiful music, you're crazy, and you're forgiven. And maybe you don't know it, but marriage is more than a card game. The only marriage I've ever approved of was that of my father and mother. <laughs> Suppose you back up and don't call me Shorty. Shorty or Sonny? What difference does it make? Now, you're liable to get all money if you don't put it in reverse. Go on with that. boys and you all sit around and lie a little bit to each other and have a good time, see? Only just remember, you've got another wildcat waiting for you at home. Oh, will I? You've got to learn to take no for an answer once in a while. I wouldn't let you give me that answer. Take a look at yourself. Why should I want to? Tomorrow, then? Okay. Mom. Hello, big man. Long time no see. You run this outfit? Well, he's the owner, pal, Mr. Sand. Well, tell Mr. Sand he can ram his 50 bucks a day up his nose. I don't need to work. Hey, here you go. Oh, why don't you let me bust him one, boss? I'd rather have you keep your help. Oh, 
going out there. I've stood for this psalm singing brother of yours for years and never squawked. But you can't bring it in here. This is my joint. This man, this man, this man. He's not going out there. Yes, with your back to me. When I invite a woman to dinner, I expect her to look at my face. That's the price she has to pay. You check, sir. Nine dollars and forty cents. This. Is if I were you, I wouldn't pay it. Stewart. Ah, come right ahead. Hey, Stuart. 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 the food. Been waiting all the food. afternoon. Food. You're fired. Do you understand? You're fired. Hey, you big bully, what's the idea of hitting that little bully? Will you kindly let me handle my own affairs? Get out. Now, what have you got to say to me? Just this, can you sleep on your stomach with such big buttons on your pajamas? Why, you... <laughs> If you please, and Mr. Carter. What is it? Can I have a month off next August? What for? Well, you see, I just got a word from my lawyer. He got me a divorce. And one month every year, I win her the custody of my wife's parents. Who blind loves babes in the wood? We've got it all so bad, but isn't it good? We're on a bumpy road, it's true. But heaven is in view for two blind love. Perhaps you'll think I'm forward, but last night when I first saw you... And slammed the door in my face. I realized that you're the man I've been dreaming of. What do you eat before you go to bed?
hear of the seating arrangements for your final approval? Oh, no, Whitcomb. Judge Chenock will sit on my left hand. And you will sit on my right hand. How will you eat? Through a tube? <laughs> Hollywood story been told so frankly, so boldly, so completely. Here is every woman who ever climbed the stairway to the stars, only to find herself at the bottom, looking up. Can't you get it through your thick skull that I'm broke? Dead, flat, stony, broke? See? I've got three dollars and eighty-five cents in my purse. Do you want that, Roy? I want you both to get out of here. Get out! And you were in love with me. And now? Take a good look at yourself. The answer's written right smack across your face. Shut up! I know that. You don't know anything! You don't know how well I know your brother. <laughs> still. There's a story in this picture that's very rich and very real, and in memory takes me back to days of adventure in a distant land, and the men who shared them with me. There was Tommy and Kiwi, Basuto and Digger, and the Yank, who was very romantic. And last but not least, Lachlan McLaughlin, a Scotsman with a hasty heart who put his brogues right into it every time he opened his mouth. Say, uh, Lackey, we're having a little discussion. You could probably help us out. Do you or don't you wear something under the kilt? That's for one question no Scot will answer rightly. money to better use. It's in Scotland. In the earth. I knew it. He's got it buried in a tin can. Have you ever been in love? With bells on. Well, when was the first time you knew? Oh, I'd say the first time I kissed her. Hey, you're not asking me to tell you about the bees and flowers, are you? 
but there are certain things that are as well known in Scotland as anywhere else. I'm glad to hear it. I'd hate to see the Scots die out. Have you been as happy with us as you've ever been in your life? I think I've shared a moment with kings. a wonderful entertainment for people of all ages. Rich, warm, human, you'll find something new and excitingly different with every beat of the hasty heart. This is it, ladies and gentlemen, the deciding game of the World Series. The Yankees with Murderer's Row coming up, one run behind. The Cardinals' hopes riding on the pitching arm and the fighting heart of one man, Alex the Great. Here's the wind-up, and here comes the pitch. Yes, the pitch. The pitch for the warmest, most wonderful, most human story ever told. The true story of Grover Cleveland Alexander and the woman who shared all the adventures of his fabulous career. From the color and excitement of his rookie days, to that unforgettable afternoon when millions cheered his name to everlasting glory. But the cheers belonged to her, for she was the strength behind his every pitch. She was the light in his darkest hours. Hers was the love that gave him the courage to win his greatest victories. Theirs was the unbeatable combination that made the winning team. <laughs> Why should I be tired? I've been stealing strength from you all season. Every game, every pitch. Without you there, I couldn't have done any of it. God sure must think a lot of me. He's given me you. Don't you understand, Raj? It isn't enough that I believe in him. Baseball's got to believe in him, too. What can I do to help Alex? Please give him back his life, Raj. Lady, what I tell you, he's a has-been. What do you think you can do with Lazari? There don't seem to be any room left for him on the bases. Play ball! Yes, great books do make great movies. This was true with Mrs. Miniver and Random Harvest. More recently, it was very true with the human comedy. And it will be true again with Dragon Seed, Madame Curie, See Here, Private Hargrove, and White Cliffs of Dover. Major Eric Knight wrote many fine stories. One of them you've seen in pictures, this above all. But his greatest story was Lassie Come Home. Lassie is the story of a dog and a boy. Oh, it isn't a pretentious picture or an epic. It is too real, too human, too beautiful for high-sounding adjectives. The boy's family was poor, so poor they had to sell Lassie, and she was shipped hundreds of miles away. But Lassie never forgot the boy, her home, her people. Then one day she ran away. She was going home. Nothing could stop her, not miles, no storms, no danger, no wounds. Twice she found refuge. Each time someone loved her, but a greater love urged her on. Did Lassie get home? Did she find the boy? Lassie's story is a magnificent one. You'll love every bit of it.
Bill was born in the forest. His first playmates were the birds and the wild animals. Here he learned the wonderful mystery and the dangerous menace of untamed nature. It was in this sylvan setting that Kathy first saw Bill. And with the passing days, the bonds of affection between them grew stronger. You see, a man goes to church to talk to a god that he can't see. But a dog, he can see his god, your Bill's god. And all he wants is to love you and have you tell him what you want him to do. It's a very odd feeling. To be someone's god. A sudden cruel twist of fate took Bill away from Kathy. And he found himself in a different world among strange people who fought and killed. Mutely and heroically, he struggled against this man-made inferno. Wounded and spirit shattered, Bill broke away and returned to the land he once knew. But he came back a killer. He heard the call of the wire and answered it. The kind you can't write, the kind you just gotta feel. He played it. And the world cheered at his feet. Listen. His haunting beat is telling the whole story. Of his fight to rise above the past. Of his climb from Dixieland jive joints to Broadway's starlit roofs. Of the strange adventure that brought him into the lives of two different and exciting women. Two dangerous and demanding loves. Keep away, Richard. Better not take any chances with me. Only people who respect themselves can ever give love fully, freely. I don't happen to respect myself. It's all too wonderful. I'll never find the words. What are you trying to do, Rick? Kill yourself because you tried for something that didn't exist. That's what you've done all your life. You cheap. What a dope I was. I thought you were class. Like a real high note you hit once in a lifetime. That's because I couldn't understand what you were saying half the time. Why, well, you're like those carnival joints I used to work in. Big flash on the outside. But on the inside, nothing but filth. from a guy who sees them all. It's the best yet. You won't tell me because you think I'll come there. You think I'd follow you. Well, you'd be insane to follow me. I... Was I insane to pick you up on the road? 
Was I crazy to let you stay here? Pretty good life here, but your going away doesn't make it seem good anymore. You know, I've got the Indian sign on me. It seems I can't win. I've sort of joined your team. Don't look forward to being without you. When I leave here, you're off my team. Lucky to be. But you're a guy with plenty of trouble. I don't have a trouble in the world. Don't tell me, brother. I know. Your trouble is women. I've cried myself to sleep at night because of you. She's got you now. She wants you very badly, doesn't she? She's willing to run away with you and keep on running and ruin everything for herself. Well, she doesn't have you now, and she'll never have you. of 10,000 cadets and of the man who knew and loved them all, Sergeant Marty Marr, whose half-century of devotion to West Point and its sons is part of the very fabric of America. Not long ago, the United States Military Academy celebrated its 150th birthday. For almost 50 of those exciting years, Marty Marr, who came to West Point as a young Irish immigrant, served there as an enlisted man. This is his story and the story of West Point, for the two are inseparable. Do they have to wear iron braces to stand like that? That's the way cadets stand. That's part of the discipline. You know, you could shoot off all their noses with one bullet. The Long Gray Line is a story with thrill and tenderness, laughter and warmth, destined to take its place on the very highest honor roll of the screen's unforgettable achievements. <laughs> You're a rotten soldier. No soldier at all. Slovenly, undisciplined, insubordinate, bad-tempered, and full of cute tricks. You like to use your fists, huh? Yes, sir. All right, let's see you use them. I have permission to hit the captain. You have permission to try. Go ahead. you your last chance. I'll have just two words out of you, my girl, and it'll be yes or no. Now, what do you say to that? I say and none yes. Of your beating around. What's that you say? I said yes. I said yes. The first word ever I hear out of you, and it's yes. In the army there's sobriety, promotions very slow. So we'll sing our was part of the life of more cadets than any man in the history of the point. Friend of presidents and plebes, generals and cadets, such as these from the famous class of 1915. Omar Nelson Bradley. Congratulations. George Edward Stratemeyer. Congratulations. James Hallward Van Fleet. Congratulations. 
fight David Eisenhower. The Long Gray Line is the masterpiece of master director John Ford, four-time winner of the Academy Award. This is his finest picture. We urge you to see it. your husband. Leonard thinks I do. Well, do you? Am I already under oath? We are dealing with a capital crime. The prosecution will try to hang your husband. Betty, bye. We'd better go upstairs now. Get undressed and lie down. We? Oui, what a nauseating prospect. How did you get hold of these? What difference does it make so long she gets what's coming to her? What have you got against her? I'll give you something to dream about, mister. Want to kiss me, ducky? You killed Emily French! No, I didn't. I didn't do it. I didn't kill her. I never killed anybody. The question is, Frau Helm, were you lying then? Are you lying now? Or are you not, in fact, a chronic and habitual liar? Damn you! Damn you! Leave her alone! Damn you! Members of the jury, are you all agreed upon your verdict? We are. Do you find the prisoner at the bar, Leonard Stephen Vole, guilty or not guilty of the murder of Emily Jane French? Guilty or not guilty? The answer to that question is the end of most mystery stories. But in witness for the prosecution, it is only the beginning of a series of climaxes that I defy you to guess. You'll talk about this picture all right, but you'll never tell the ending to your friends, because you won't want to spoil their excitement and their fun. <laughs>
To prepare anxious audiences for the arrival of Gone with the Wind, MGM released this unique preview trailer which heightened awareness of the film's release without revealing a single frame of the picture. Gone with the Wind has captured the imagination and acclaim of the entire world. The screen has never known a love story to compare with this, when Rhett Butler meets Scarlett O'Hara. I love you more than I've ever loved any woman. And I've waited longer for you than I've ever waited for any woman. Let me alone! Kiss me once. Can't we ever forget that day at Twelve Oaks? Do you think I could ever forget it? Have you forgotten it? Can you honestly say you don't love me? No, I, I don't love you. It's a lie. Well, even if it is a lie, do you think I'd go off and leave Melanie and the baby? I'm not cornered. And you'll never corner me, Red Butler, or frighten me. You've lived in dirt so long, you can't understand anything else. And you're jealous of something you can't understand. Good night. It's not that easy, Scarlett. Turn me out while you chase Ashley Wilkes, while you dreamed of Ashley Wilkes. This is one night you're not turning me out. A love affair you'll remember as long as you live, filled with all the fire and fury of the times in which it happened. Gone with the wind. First picture to win 10 Academy Awards. The most honored, the most talked about motion picture in all film history.